We're going to be reading from Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. That is Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. Today's message is titled, God Expects Us to Give Thanks. God Expects Us to Give Thanks. Starting at verse 11. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along, along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. May God bless the reading of his word. We see earlier in Luke chapter 5 that Jesus already healed a person with leprosy. Jesus was in one of the towns and a man came along who was covered with leprosy. Leprosy was a term that referred to several skin diseases. It is not limited to what is called leprosy today, which is Hansen's disease. And this man who met Jesus was covered with leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him to heal him. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. And you want to know what happened next? Jesus reached out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. We see in Luke 5 that Jesus healed a person with leprosy. Well, in this passage we are going to be looking at this morning, you can times that by 10. Jesus heals 10 people with leprosy, which shows his love, his compassion, and his power. In chapter 17 and verse 11, we read, On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. Jesus was making his way to Jerusalem, where he would give his life as a ransom for many. If you remember back in Luke chapter 9, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on a mountain. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared. And as they were talking with Jesus, you want to know what they spoke about? His departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. And in Luke 9 and verse 51, it says, He set his face to go to Jerusalem. Jesus is heading to Jerusalem for the very last time where he will be the sacrifice for our sins. And as he was making his way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. Luke does not give the exact location of this event, yet we see that he reached the border between Samaria and Galilee. He is in a location that is close to both Jews and Samaritans. And in verse 12 we read, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance. Other translations, such as the King James Version, tell us that these lepers were men. There met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. Leprosy was a terrible, terrible skin disease, which was contagious, which is why it says they stood at a distance. It was a deeply contagious skin disease, and in Jewish society it made a person unclean, which meant the person with leprosy would be barred from all temple activities, they would be put outside the camp, 
Numbers 5 2 says, Command the people of Israel that they put out of the camp everyone who is leprous or has a discharge, and everyone who is unclean through contact with the dead. People with leprosy were put outside the camp. Do you remember what happened to Miriam in Numbers chapter 12? Aaron and Miriam spoke against Moses because he married a Kushnite woman. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. They challenged his authority. And in Numbers 12 of verse 9 it says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. Miriam ended up breaking out with leprosy. It became as white as snow. Miriam had to be put outside the camp because of her condition. I was talking with one of my friends who was in the military who was recently deployed. And when he was overseas, COVID-19 broke out on camp. And they had a certain section that was blocked off outside the camp for anyone with COVID. People with COVID were quarantined because of their condition. They were isolated and all alone, and it sounded miserable. And until they recovered, they were put outside the camp. Well, in the same way, it was like that with leprosy. In Leviticus 13, of verse 46, it says, As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. Which meant they would be away from their families, away from their friends, away from their jobs, and they would have no access to the temple. They would be away from all of that. And if someone came near them, they would have to cover their upper lip and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! as a warning to others to stay away from them. In Leviticus 13, and verse 45, we read these words. The leprous person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes, and let the hair of his head hang loose, and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! They had to announce that they were unclean, so no one would go near them. Can you imagine what that would be like? They would have felt isolated and all alone. No one would go near them. Morale would be at an all-time low. It would be like if someone had COVID-19. We know it is highly contagious. If people went around shouting, I have COVID-19, I have COVID-19, no one would want to go near them. People would turn around and go the complete opposite way. Well, in the same way, it was like that with leprosy. People had to cry out, unclean, unclean. No one would want to go near them. And to make matters worse, people who suffered from leprosy were looked at as if they were under a divine curse. In ancient Judaism, people viewed suffering as a result of sin. Some people would have viewed leprosy as a punishment for sin. People with leprosy would have been the outcasts in society. It would have been a lonely and miserable life as a leper. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance their condition put them at a distance. They stood at a distance. These ten men with leprosy would have been miserable, suffering from their condition, away from their families, away from their friends. Maybe they felt abandoned by their society. Maybe they felt abandoned by God. And here comes the Son of God. God in the flesh. Here comes their maker. The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who is so filled with compassion. He enters the village and he was met by ten lepers. 
And in verse 13, we see the request. And lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have pity on us. Show mercy to us. They were asking for mercy. In other words, give us what we don't deserve. We want to be healed. We want to be cleansed. The ten men with leprosy knew they needed to be cleansed. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And in verse 14, we see the reply. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. By Jesus sending them to the priest, he was being obedient to the word of God. Going to the priest was a normal procedure after a cure had taken place. We know that from Leviticus 14 and verse 2. When Jesus healed the man with leprosy in Luke chapter 5, he told him to go to the priest as well. In Luke 5 and verse 14 we read, Go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. The priests basically acted as health inspectors or purity inspectors where they would declare a person clean. A priest would confirm or validate their cure. And notice how it says, and as they went, they were cleansed. As they went in obedience to what Christ commanded, Christ healed them. And that passage that Millie read out for us earlier, we see that Naaman, too, was called to act in expectation of his cleansing. We see that in 2 Kings 5, or verse 10. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, that is to Naaman, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. He was called to act in faith. Jesus called the ten men with leprosy to act in obedience to what he commanded. And when we read God's word, God wants us to act in obedience to what he commands. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they were making their way to the priest, they would have realized that they were cleansed. They would have understood that they were healed. This was a divine miracle that took place, which involved ten men being cleansed of leprosy. We have seen the request, we have heard the reply, and in verse 15, we will see the return. Verse 15 says, Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He realizes that he has been cleansed. And unlike the other nine, he returns to give thanks. We see that he has an attitude of gratitude. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Falling at someone's feet was an act of submission. He is acknowledging Jesus' authority and he is giving him thanks. And at the end of verse 16, this is where I believe Luke would have shocked his readers. He says, now he was a Samaritan. I believe Luke set this up earlier in verse 11 by saying Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Luke reveals that the one person who returned to give thanks was the Samaritan. He was a foreigner. He was an outsider. There was a lot of hostility between Jews and Samaritans. In John 4 verse 9 it says, For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And the reason why they were together was most likely because of their condition as lepers. Samaritans had their own version of the Pentateuch. Jews and Samaritans also disagreed on the proper place of worship. And we see that he was, and we see that it was a foreigner who returned to give thanks. And giving thanks was a form of worship. 
Psalm 100 or verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Ezra 3.11 says, With praise and thanksgiving they sang to the Lord. And we see the Samaritan doing both of these. In verse 15, he is praising God. And in verse 16, he is at the feet of Jesus, thanking him. To thank Jesus is to thank God. Because Jesus is God. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Colossians 2 verse 9. So the Samaritan was the only one who returned to give thanks. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? In the NASB, it says, Were there not ten cleansed, but the nine? Where are they? Think about this for a second. Jesus cleansed ten men with leprosy. No longer will they be cut off from their community. No longer will they have to live in isolation away from everyone else. No longer will they be away from their families, away from their friends. No longer will they be excluded from temple activities. No longer will they need to cover their upper lip and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! And yet only one returned to give thanks? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? We see that Jesus expects us to give thanks. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, we read these words. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. God wants us to have an attitude of gratitude. God wants us to give thanks. He wants us to be thankful. Notice how it says, give thanks in all circumstances. It doesn't say give thanks in some circumstances. It says give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. As Christians, God's will for our lives is to give thanks in all circumstances. When I was younger, my parents told me about the importance of saying please and thank you. From a young age, I was told to make sure that when somebody does something nice for me, to make sure to thank him or her. Well, how much more important is it to make sure to thank God for what he has done for us? As Christians, God gave us his son, his one and only son, to be the sacrifice for our sins. We ought to be grateful. We ought to be thankful. As believers, God put His Holy Spirit within us that is dwelling within us, that is molding us into the image of Christ. We ought to be thankful. As Christians, we should be the most thankful people on this planet. When God answers our prayers, we are to give Him thanks. As Christians, we have so much to be thankful for, and God wants us to give thanks. Ephesians 5.20 says, Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As Christians, we should have an attitude of gratitude. And here's the thing. In this passage we have before us, God's chosen people are the ones who don't return to give thanks. Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? That word foreigner is only mentioned here in the New Testament. And it means of another race. In other words, was no one found to return and give praise to God except this person from another race? The one who returned to give thanks was an outsider. He was a Samaritan. He was outside the covenant of God. He was not allowed to even enter the temple. There was the court of the Gentiles, but there was a sign prohibiting Gentiles from going in any further. He was not allowed to enter the temple. And here he is at the feet of Jesus, praising and worshiping God. 
The nine Jews were on their way to the priest. The Samaritan is the one who turned around and returned to the high priest. He went to Christ himself. The Samaritan acknowledged Jesus as the person who was worthy of his worship. And he gave him thanks. The Samaritan is on his face before Jesus. And Jesus says to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. The healing was more than just physical. The Greek word that is used is sozo, which can also mean to save. In other words, your faith has saved you. Not only did Jesus cleanse him from his leprosy, he cleansed him from his sins. 1 Peter 2.10 says, Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you would not receive mercy, but now you have received mercy. And I believe what Luke is showing us in this passage is that the good news is for everyone. Jesus loves the outcast. Jesus cares for the outcast. And so too should we. The lepers knew that they were unclean, which is why they cried out for mercy. There are a lot of people in life that do not know they are unclean. Like the ten men with leprosy, we are unclean. We have a terrible disease called sin. And the penalty for sin is death. We have all sinned against God. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I mean, we can't even spell sin without saying I, S, I, N. The people with leprosy, because of their condition, they had to stand at a distance. Well, our sins have put us at a distance between us and God. Isaiah 59, 2 says, But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. Our sins have separated us from Him. We have been alienated from God. And we know later in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus would enter into Jerusalem for the very last time where He would be the sacrifice for our sins. Where He would hang on a cross and received the wrath of God against sin. He died on the cross and we know that death could not hold him. He had a bodily resurrection three days later. And like the people with leprosy, we too can cry out to Christ and ask him for his mercy. We can ask him to give us what we don't deserve, which is a personal relationship with him. Today is the day of salvation, and the door of God's mercy is open. If we leave this life without knowing Christ, the door of God's mercy will be sealed shut, and it will never open again. We must repent of our sins and put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and in Christ alone for our salvation, trusting what Christ has done for us when he hung on a cross at Calvary, paying the debt in full, receiving the penalty and the punishment that we deserve. To the unclean, come to Christ and have your sins forgiven. God can forgive you of every single one of your sins through Jesus Christ. We need to be cleansed. We need to have our sins forgiven. I'll be available after the service if anybody has any questions or anything like that. Considering it is Thanksgiving weekend, I would like everyone to write out a list of things that you were thankful for. And then I would like you to pray and thank the Lord for each and every single one of those things that are on your list. As Christians, let us have an attitude of gratitude. Let us be thankful. And let us never forget what Christ has done for us. So we talked about the request the reply, and we see the return. Let us 